My name is Kenneth Gang, and I'm the director of Olotere, and this is the process behind Olotere. That's you want. If you do plenty things, shall will not be everything. Yeah, enter Mozo. Olotere is a film about an undercover journalist who goes into the world of sex trafficking because she wants to unravel um, the people behind that shady industry. For me, the process from the beginning, um, after getting the script, I had an idea of the sort of film that I wanted to make, and which is very style. You want to get people drawn into it, it's almost like they're watching a documentary and not fiction, basically. So in trying to work out the movement, we thought about getting really small cameras that will give us access to their faces and any parts of the set we want to get into. And so, of course, we decided to work with the, with the GH5. And from the beginning, we have six pages. If you look at the scripts, there are six pages in the opening scene where we are introduced to the world of these ladies. And so I thought about shooting the film in just one take. So you have six pages that can be shot as a single take. And so when I designed the treatment, I mean the opening treatment for it, the challenge was if we're going to get the right location that will give us that because I want to start from outside the, the club all the way to the gate of the club and inside the club and upstairs. And so um, there's a place that I've been to, that I've checked it before. And so I was able to just go and scout it with the, with the DOP. And we, we worked on the movements and of course, the sort of elements, production elements we're going to have in it. So when you watch the film, the opening shot is a single take that took us, because that was the first day of shoot actually. And you know how you always have first day blues where maybe things might not actually go right. But with the, with the planning that we're able to do with the production designer and the cinematographer and everything, that was um, what we're able to film the next day. So I think we finished filming towards like maybe 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. the next day. And, and again, the whole process of Olotere is about having the camera go 360 all the time. So you're, you're, you're looking at, when discussing the idea with the DOP, it was about using practical, practical lamps, basically. And so practical lamps in the sense that you have to just make the lighting to be part of the set. And so that at any given time when the actors move, because I really want the actors to always walk and talk, because I have this really whole phobia for having actors just sitting in one place or standing in one place and rendering the lines. And so I wanted that whole energy to reflect in the film. And in that, you need the actors to, have, to know that they have all the space where they actually want to go to and just be impulsive, um, basically. So those are some of the things that we did in terms of lighting. Of course, like, we'll have additional lights, but most of the time, it is just parts of the set. And of course, the camera, the, the, our, our choice for camera too enable us to, to have cameras that will actually have um, ability to see images even in low light. It is now my story. But this one will get small, I'll love. Where do you be? You be police? Once we reach Europe, we'll feel the same better when you call us. Here we go trap. When the time reach, we'll come out. Next! We will come and get you. There is so much more to the story that needs to be told. The border scene was another really challenging scene because we needed to have a border that really looks like a border. And we thought about going to semi border. But the problem was that we were having lots of challenges dealing with the paperwork. So one day, I decided to send the executive producer an email, um, Ms. Moabud, when I told her that, is it possible for, for her to ha give us access to see if we can have access to Equal Atlantic? And she said, well, she'll see. Like a miracle, she was able to actually have that. And so what we did with the set designer, the, the set designer and of course the, the DOP was that we created a facade and of course, like, you know, the way facade works, it's like on the other side, you're not going to see anything. But on this side, this is actually what you're seeing. So we had to create like, a real border post 
and Victor, who is the production designer, was able to give us all the sort of vehicles that you will have around the border area and the people and the people selling everything. So it was like in this very serene place that's facing the sea, we were able to create this chaotic um, scene that will give us access to tell the sort of story we want to tell. And we shot over two days, actually, the border scene that lasted for just a few seconds, like maybe a few minutes, not seconds, on screen. You did great! This is no longer your story. It is now my story. Let me it's barely 24 hours. Give some time before you begin to panic. What if something has happened to her? The longer we wait, the worse our situation could get. Yusef, if you fuck with me, I'd ask by you. And that is the process behind the film, Olotere.